Disclaimer, this video is not sponsored. So, for the past 7 or so years of making YouTube, I've been using the same 27-inch iMac from mid-2011. Inside, we have an Intel Core i5 running at 2.7GHz, an upgraded 8GB of RAM running at an OK 1300MHz, and inside for graphics is an AMD Radeon HD 6770M with 512MB of RAM. Even with the limitations of that half gig of RAM and it being almost 10 years old, I've still been able to game at 60fps with decent quality and edit videos at a resolution of 720p 60 frames thanks to iMovie. For a while, the only sacrifice being made was rendering times. But, as time went on, the age started to show, and I decided maybe I should start thinking about an upgrade. Ladies and gentlemen, our new flagship GPU, the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3080. Wow, the graphics. Imagine if my eyeballs could see this Ray tracing. My is gonna look so good. I didn't actually get one. Yes, it's no surprise, I didn't get a 3080, not only because they are being sold at insane markups, but at this point, I don't exactly need something that powerful. There's still an upside to this though, while everyone was racing to get the next generation of gaming, I was looking around on Facebook Marketplace and PC Part Picker to try and get the best deals I could. And if you've never used PC Part Picker, seriously, go check it out. This website is a great help for building PCs. They list multiple vendors and show a chart tracking the history of the price to help you find the best prices. They also have forums with in-depth build guides to help you piece together a good PC if you don't want to spend too much time searching for parts. So with all that said, let's build a PC! First up is the motherboard. I decided to get my hands on a B450 Tomahawk Max. Could be considered overkill, but for the price I couldn't turn it down. This board has everything I need and more, including tons of fan headers, pump plugs, and SATA ports. Speaking of needs, this board supports Ryzen 3000 series CPUs out of the box. Perfect for my CPU, the Ryzen 3600. I chose this CPU for its 6 core setup and decent price. For power, I chose the Thermatake Smart 500 Watt need power for your system. For RAM, I'm using two 8GB 3200MHz sticks. And for fans, well, I didn't really choose these, they came with the case and I'm just gonna use them, you know? Speaking of the case, I'm using a Deep Cool Mad X55 that I got used off of Facebook Marketplace. Oh, by the way, if you're gonna use Facebook Marketplace, be careful, you can get ripped off on there. And finally, the GPU, which I got very lucky with. This is the Radeon Sapphire RX 580 Nitro SE, which I got for about 200 bucks because of a broken BIOS switch. Alright, now that everything's laid out, let's get to the build. The first thing I did was unbox the power supply. This power supply isn't particularly big, but if you can afford it, I would suggest getting a large one. You may find unboxing this first weird, but before we get into any of the other parts, we need to get ourselves grounded. This part isn't too hard, we basically have to just plug this in, don't turn it on, leave it on the off position, and basically whenever you feel like you have static, touch it. Just touch it. Uh, a CD? <laughs> that looks like it's been through the ringer. I don't know how this happened, but nothing else was damaged, so moving forward, we got a thank you letter, which is very nice, a page detailing how to install a cooler on an Intel bracket for some reason, not that it matters. We also got a manual, some SATA plugs, and of course, the backing plate, which is MSI branded. So now that we've gone through the box and gotten rid of everything we don't need, let's bend these sides down so we have a place to set it, touch the power supply to get rid of static, and grab the RAM. Alright, so this is just a little note on the side, but I would not entirely recommend using this, just specifically because in this section here it tries to explain how the RAM works, but it doesn't exactly differentiate which one of these is dual channel. like. It says like here, one and two, but they aren't labeled. And when you scan this here QR code, the guide only installs one stick. Just if anyone needs to know because they're having the same issue, these two. So the first slot closest to the edge, and then the third one. That's all you need to know. Alright, it's time for the nerve-wracking part. Drum roll. 
the CPU. Now, I cannot stress this enough. If you're not using, like, static bracelets like I am, touch your power supply often, especially while handling your CPU. This, if this fries, you're fucked. All right, with that said, let's pull it out and get it inserted. The CPU comes with a nice little plastic sleeve and a sticker for the front of your case. We're gonna need to go to our motherboard and remove these Intel brackets so we can fasten the AMD cooler. We're also gonna lift this bar so we can put the CPU in. And don't be scared when putting in your CPU. You can always hesitate and try again in a couple minutes. It's in. Once installed, we're gonna lower the bar again, clipping it back in. You can see I was a little nervous, but it went away. Next step is installing the CPU cooler. This cooler is the Wraith Stealth cooler that came stock with my CPU. In the future, I'm gonna be making a video about upgrading my cooler. Be sure to subscribe to catch that. But for the purposes of this build, this one will work fine. We're gonna screw it down now, going in a crosswise pattern, and we don't wanna tighten the bolts too tight. Now that that's done, and everything's mounted to the motherboard. Let's get to putting it in the case. All right, now that we got everything into the case, let's take a second to talk about wiring the fans, which gave me some difficulties. Since all the fans I got came with the Facebook case, I didn't get to choose what connectors the fans run off of. Plus, the case didn't even come with an RGB controller. Luckily, I was still able to connect everything. Using a standard 3-pin for the rear fan, Molex, which everyone thinks is the devil for some reason, for the top fans, and a 4-pin splitter the seller gave me for the front fans. So, rip front RGB, but they're all working, so I'm happy. But with all that said, I think I still did a pretty good job for this being my first time ever cable managing a PC. It doesn't look 100%, this ain't no Linus tech tips, but I'm proud of myself. And honestly, this whole build has really built up my confidence. So, let's get the side back on, give her a boot. Unexpectedly, the top fans had lights in them, which was a pretty cool surprise. Alright, now that we got our computer running, I'm gonna use a USB to load Windows 10 onto it. So to do this, you're gonna need to download the Windows 10 media creation tool, which you can get from Microsoft's website. Now if you're in a similar position to the one I am, you can't run EXEs on a Mac. Not without a little help from some other programs, anyway. To get past that hurdle, we're gonna have to install a virtual machine on VirtualBox. I'm not gonna be doing a tutorial for this, I will in the future, so keep an eye out for that. But for now, I'm just gonna skip to when I have the operating system on the USB. Alright, now that we got it on the USB, all you really gotta do is click one of these, you can move them. Move the USB to the front of the line so it boots from the USB, and then restart your computer. Once you do that, it'll load you into the media creation tool. It's gonna ask you for your Windows key, so have that ready. Windows 7 and Windows 10 keys both work. And once you put that in, it'll let you install. Select your hard drive and install Windows to it. You may need to reformat. Once the install is finished, we're gonna have to go back to the BIOS. Once you're here, you're just gonna switch the boot priority to the hard drive you just installed Windows on. 
for my Windows install, I'm not going to be connecting it to the internet just because it allows it to download a bunch of stuff that I don't want. Alright, here we are in Windows now. So we're going to want to update so we can just get the computer to a working order. We're then going to have to download graphics card drivers, drivers for the motherboard, and drivers for the CPU, which can all be found online. Just search for the parts you have and you'll be able to find them pretty easily from the manufacturer's website. Alright, now that everything's working and installed, it's time to hop in a game and do some benchmarks. Throughout the process of making this video, I had a lot of worries on my mind. Things not fitting, the fear of accidentally breaking parts, the fear of it all not working, the fear of my old Mac breaking while I'm building or editing, creating a situation where I have no computer at all, plus losing all my footage. But luckily, I came out with minimal scars. I didn't actually show it in the main video, but during the build of this PC, I took up Gamble and bought a cheap used hard drive and it decided to nuke itself, so I had to reinstall Windows. Luckily, I had nothing important on there, so things were still good. Overall, I think this PC build was a really fun thing to do. It's not only going to help me by giving me the security of having a computer that I know works, but it's also going to give me the chance to do some live streaming and store up some good footage and hopefully make some great videos for you guys. Now, do I recommend building a PC? I can't say yes. Not everyone is going to have the same building experience. Plus, not everyone has the same accessibility to certain parts. I got very lucky with the parts that I got. Surprisingly stayed within my budget. I still had money left. I wasn't keeping insanely great track, but again, not everyone is going to have a lot of money either. And with GPUs costing uh, basically your leg these days, I can't really say I'd recommend it. But if you can find the parts and you can get a good deal, don't let me hold you back. The only thing I can really say I regret after all that I've learned is not getting this video out sooner for you guys, and I hope to be more efficient now that I have this new computer. It's been good. It's been real good. This is definitely one of my new favorite videos. Anyways, as always, my name is Kelby Shubra, and I hope to see you all in the next video. Cheers!